Hi everybody, it's David Porter. And uh, today I want to talk about, whoops, first thing I want to do is roll up my window. It's 30 degrees out and I am sitting by beautiful Lake Champlain, but it's pretty cold here. Okay, today I want to talk about uh, something that I never learned in undergraduate or graduate or even my, my uh, internship. And that is how to spot someone who is under the influence of a substance. Now, it's not like in the movies. It, what you see portrayed in the movies is not the same as reality. Because in reality, you have people who have very high tolerance. And they can use their substance of choice without displaying any very obvious signs of impairment. The signs that they have used tends to be much more subtle. And today I want to talk about central nervous system stimulants. The three main ones are cocaine and, uh, actually, okay, I guess it's two main ones, cocaine and crack cocaine and amphetamine and methamphetamine. Very briefly, uh, cocaine is as most people know, a powder, which is either insulfated, that is, it's sucked up into the nose, uh, hits the mucous membranes, gets diffused through the capillaries in the mucous membranes into progressively larger blood vessels until it hits your circulatory system. Every beat of your heart takes another trip to your brain. Cocaine can also be mixed with a liquid medium and injected directly into the circulatory system. Uh, lasts around 20, 30, the high lasts about 20, 30 minutes. Amphetamines have a much longer half-life. Amphetamines tend to have a half-life of about four hours, and they can be taken through the nose or injected or taken orally. Methamphetamine, which comes either as a powder or a crystalline form, the powder form, snorted or injected, the crystalline form is smoked. So you have similarities in that uh Cocaine and amphetamines can be a powder, either insulfated or taken intravenously, or they can be in a crystalline form, such as crack or methamphetamine, uh, crystal methamphetamine, which is sm smokable. So, how do you tell when someone has used? First thing to do, look at their eyes. The eyes will tell whether or not they've used. If they have used a central nervous system stimulant, they are going to be in a state of sympathetic nervous system activation. Their pupils will be much too large for the amount of ambient light. Number two, look at their skin. They might be sweating, uh, diaphoresis, which is just a medical term for sweating. They may have tremors. If you look at their hands, hold their hands out, their hands will be shaking. Close their eyes, their eyelids will be vibrating. They may be very restless. They might not be able to sit still. A lot of squirming around in the chair. Um, a lot of scratching and prodding themselves and smoothing their hair. Uh, so what are called self-grooming behaviors, uh, which indicate tension and discomfort. Maybe biting their nails, picking their ears. Uh, Maybe picking up objects, looking at them, and setting them back down again. Uh, repetitive... Um, non-goal-oriented behavior is what we're talking about. is an expression of restlessness and tension. Ah, hot chocolate. Very good on a cold winter day. You will have... Um, th so those are the subjective signs that you can observe, and they're not conclusive. They have to be taken within context. Now, if someone is sweating profusely at room temperature, that's suspicious. If they're sweating profusely and it's 90 degrees, well, they're probably sweating that way because of the ambient temperature. If uh, they can also be perspiring because they're anxious, cold sweats. The pupils, if someone is very anxious and adrenalized, yes, their pupils can be larger than normal. Um, if you misjudge the amount of ambient light in the room, that you may think that their pupils are, large, are are too large, but generally speaking, when someone's pupils are dilated or enlarged, it's an indicator that they've used a central nervous system stimulant. 
or that they're coming down from a central nervous system depressant and it's part of the withdrawal. And by the way, all the symptoms I mentioned earlier, they are also indicators of, cent of central nervous system depressant withdrawal. A rule of thumb is withdrawal is going to have the inverse effect of the drug which is being withdrawn from. In other words, speedy drugs that suppress the mm -hmm. Uh, central, or excuse me, speedy drugs that crank up the central nervous system, activate the sympathetic nervous system. When they're taken away, the parasympathetic nervous system will kick in and overcompensate and slow everything down. Central nervous system depressants, which activate the parasympathetic system and slow everything down, take them away, nervous system overcompensates and you rebound and have the aforementioned symptoms, sweating, tremors, restlessness, agitation. Also, you can add irritability, you can add anxiety, um, other effects will be insomnia, and hypersexuality. These tend to be effects that are being really horny. These tend to be the effects of central nervous system stimulants. Now, what you can't observe directly, you have to take some objective physiological measures, include their blood pressure. Blood pressure in a healthy adult will be 120 over 80 or lower. Um, unless someone is hypertensive, that is, they have a medical condition, uh, and their their blood pressure should not be above that range. So elevated blood pressure can be an indicator of CNS stimulant use. Tachycardia, which means rapid heart rate, specifically heart rate over 100 beats per minute. Again, that can be attributed to anxiety. It can also be that someone has used a central nervous system stimulant. And you can do a urine tox screen, which can detect benzalekanine, which is a metabolite or bro broken down byproduct of uh, either crack cocaine or powdered cocaine. Or you can check for amphetamine metabolites, uh, broken down byproducts of amphetamine present in urine. That's really about the only conclusive way to tell if someone has used other than, obviously, self-disclosure. Someone tells you that they've used, that they're under the influence. So, these signs are inconclusive, but they're signs that should get your attention. If you're a, an LADC and you have some, someone sitting in your office in wintertime sweating and trembling and their pupils are dilated, chances are they are either under the influence of something or coming down from something. And you inquire, hey, what's going on right now? It's 30 degrees out and you're sweating. Your pupils are much too large for the amount of light in the room. You're shaking. Tell me what's happening. And there are a couple people walking by right now who are probably wondering why I'm talking to myself. She's definitely wondering why I'm talking to myself. I'm making a video. That's why. Okay. Have another sip of hot chocolate.